Thomas! Hammond! If she is ice here! If you possessed even an ounce of finesse, you wouldn't be slithering about like an idiot. I might be doing it slightly on purpose. Business car, eh? Ha-ha! <laughs> oh, it's just a crazy car. It goes mental. Yeah, it's just really silly. Sliding about on the snow. Oh, look at me, full of character. I'll tell you a story. There was a Mercedes engineer and a Jaguar engineer having dinner one night. And the Mercedes engineer said, we have, forgive the accent, <laughs> we have a quality test at the Mercedes factory. Every night we take a car off the line at random. <laughs> we put a cat in it. <laughs> Close the doors. If when we come back in the morning, we know the door seals are working correctly if the cat has suffocated. <laughs> No. <laughs> now, the Jaguar engineer said, yeah, we've got something very similar at our factory. We take a car off the line at random, we put a cat in it, we close the door, and we know the car's been built properly if when we come back in the morning, the cat hasn't escaped. <laughs> that is, um... True story. Yeah, true story. I mean, what staggers me about that car is they can't possibly have designed it in the time it's taken since BMW no. left. No, they, they had, must they, have they must, they have, must have, have had an underground production line that BMW, <laughs> when they were running it, never knew about. Yeah. What are they doing in the parade grounds? <laughs> oh, keep it I'm not doing anything right. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> just, 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 what is this vaulting horse you have here? <laughs> They're They're underneath. Underneath. <laughs> underneath as a stove. <laughs> They had one that, and it was just about BMW leaving. You know, the day we have tried and we have failed with you people. Chill out. Right, chill out, <laughs> mate. Take care, be good, thanks for coming. Right, <laughs> break out that V8, get the supercharger, get the nitrous, we'll get something going here. Let's finally get it started. No idea. This is the picture they sent, OK? <laughs> it's under a cloth. Yes. And who's he? That's Mick Dick. Oh, that's him? Yeah. <laughs> Best friend, as it turns out, of uh, Billy Willie. <laughs> yeah, they work, they work for Bob Knob, do they? <laughs> With Roger Todger. <laughs> <laughs> they were going to get it designed by the Scottish car designer, uh, Jock Cock. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there was something interesting in here, OK? There was, genuinely, right? Because what Audi has done is they've outlined what the A8 customer is, and they say... <laughs> He's highly affluent, uh, this, uh, an average income of $500,000 a year. Uh, he's 58 years old, uh, highly educated, uh, mostly married. Mostly married? <laughs> what is that? What, so he's sort of married, I don't know, down to there? <laughs> and this bit is separated. Yeah, it says he's got a few children still in the household. What, in the basement? Yeah, he's a kidnapper, is what I'm saying. <laughs> here who is 58 years old on half a million dollars a year with divorced shins and some children in the basement. <laughs> oh dear, Mick Dick's cocked up. <laughs> He's <laughs> built a car for someone who doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know the new Mercedes S-Class, OK? It's got this um, cruise control on it. It's like an active cruise control. And uh, we've got some footage here of how it works, OK? You're driving along, there's a radar in front of you, and it can sense if the car in front has stopped, or even if it is an emergency stop, and it will bring you to a big halt. So you don't crash. It's very clever, isn't so it? So you don't have to touch the brakes, it will just sense the car in front. OK, now a German uh, TV company went to Mercedes and said, we'd quite like to film that happening, for real, if we may. So Mercedes said, yeah, come on down the factory, we'll set up an experiment for you, you and film it. And this is what happened. Here's the car, OK, out of the building, into the fog. Guy can see nothing. For the Germans. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling a little hot under my collar. <laughs> and they were German technique. I like the idea that once it had all settled and the fog had gone, a little German voice said, There you go, it stopped. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did. <laughs> and now we must, uh, we must move it along. Think that over the years they'd try and inch the engine forwards. Now, sir, look at our lovely new headlamps. Meanwhile, the engine's coming towards the front, but no. German engineers don't do U-turns, so it's still out there at the back. But you sense immediately that it doesn't want to do this. It doesn't like that. I have a serious racing car, Englisher. Don't drive with your clown shoes on. 
Sticking with our theme of the Germans, here's a worrying piece of news. You have to bear with me, It'll take a second to get there. Mercedes, next to their factory, they have a car park. Into that car park, they put all the new cars as they build them. So they line them all up, all shiny. Mm -hmm. Their problem is, every year, there are massive hailstorms. Massive. Big hailstones come down, ruin the paint on all their brand new cars. Mercedes, being Mercedes, obvious solution. Ah! Well, just control the weather. So they've learned a way of sending aeroplanes up, and they drop chemicals on the clouds, and that in turn breaks down and dissolves the hailstones. No hailstones, doesn't destroy. But this the is a big problem. Well, this is a big problem because those hailstorms came for a good reason. God sent them, and God sent them with good reason because just up the road from the Mercedes factory is the German wine producing area. God doesn't like German wine, let's be honest. So every oh, year, God honest. sends hailstorms to flatten the German vines yeah. so we don't have to have any blue nun and black tower. <laughs> and now Mercedes has gone along. Ah, we have got rid of the, oh, we have got rid of the clouds. More German wine, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen. It's terrifying. Oh, it's bad news. No, but I just wondered, why don't they just, for example, build a shed? Uh, well, because they're German. Well, they're German. Outside, this would be simple. If it's hailing, I don't Nine. think... It is easier to send a Messerschmitt into the clouds and <laughs> shoot, the clouds. <laughs> shoot the clouds out of the sky. You know when BMW bought Rolls-Royce? You remember that? Yes. They said, it is entirely English, it'll be based in England, and it'll be staffed and run by English people. Well, the managing director this, this week, a chap called Tony Gott, uh, has, uh, how can I put this, left suddenly and unexpectedly. And he's been replaced by a chap called Karl Heinz Kalpsel. <laughs> Good English name. That's, yeah. that's the seventh Earl Karl Heinz Kalpsel of yeah, Chatsworth, isn't possibly. it? Possibly. And the interesting thing was, when that factory opened, the underground bunker they built down in Sussex, I went to have a look round. And do you remember that film, The Eagle Has Landed, where German paratroopers had taken over a village and were pretending to be English? It was just like you going around going, so tell me, how do you fit the dashboard on? Is it glue or is it screwed on? Can I just say, I like HP sauce. <laughs> and this morning I heard a cuckoo. Because you know, the way to find them out is what they used to do in the war. MI6, if they thought someone was a German spy, drag him in, say, we think you're a German spy. Good Lord, no, I'm not. I was in Eton and then I was in the guards. You can check on my family history. It's impeccable. All right, then, if you say you're English, what's this? And show them a picture of a squirrel. Ah, it was a marmoset. No, don't be ridiculous. This is much smaller than a marmoset and it has a big bushy tail, so what is it? Well, if it's not a marmoset, it must be a squirrel. Because <laughs> no German, no matter how well they speak English, can say squirrel. That's what they should do with the next roles. Call it the squirrel. <laughs> That's what Aston Martin did. When they got a German boss and they knew he was coming, they called the car the Vanquish. <laughs> Can't say that. Who is watching the managing director now? It's brilliant. We have the... <laughs> How many of those engines does AMG make by hand every year? 18,000, and that's not including the ones they make for um, Pagani with the Zonda. There's over 18,000 yeah. by hand. I mean, Fritz must be the hardest working bloke in the whole of Europe. He is. I can't come home tonight, I'm just making us a 20,000 engines. Meet my hands! So, <laughs> fingers <laughs> up, it's one to spoon. Yeah, it's amazing. There's no wonder he gets the odd one wrong. Um, anyway. Uh, now, ever since BMW announced the new Mini, you remember, what, four years ago, something like that, they've been saying, oh, there's going to be loads of really exciting, wild and wacky versions of it we'll do like like a mini flatbed pickup and a mini cement mixer and a, a fire engine and one of those things for getting into aeroplanes, all based on the Mini. Well, they've finally got round and done it. A mini new version, and it is a mini estate, which oh. isn't... <laughs> Marvellous. Isn't quite as exciting <laughs> as we'd hoped. But what do you reckon they've done? This, it's a, a German car, a French engine, of course, uh, but they've decided to make it British. They've wanted to give it something quintessentially British. So what do you think they've given it? That a just says queen. No. A beef eater. No. A Edward Fox. A hearse. No. A what? A hearse. A hearse? <laughs> no. What they've done is fit it with some teaspoons and tea bags. <laughs> that's it. That sort of thing that's really it. annoys me. We should do a car that's quintessentially German. Well, just replace the spoons with little sausages. No, clips. no. <laughs> Give it trafficators that go like that. <laughs> a sat nav that only goes to Poland. And find the fan belts that will last for a thousand years. <laughs>
take it through Switzerland, see what they make of it. Nein, it is too noisy, get it out, get it out! Getting off topic, just for a moment, actually, I was driving down here this morning and I couldn't help noticing that my Mercedes just said on the dashboard, your service is due in 26 days. And I just thought, how Germanic and boring is that? It's very precise. I know, and then I was thinking, what's going to happen on the 27th day when inevitably I still haven't had it serviced? Cooler. Three weeks. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, funny, it's funny you should say this, actually, because uh, my little Fiat's overdue for a service. And I was driving along the other day and all of a sudden this little picture of a spanner appeared on the dashboard. Well, that's what it's calling you. Yeah, it would. You are a spanner. Oh, is that what it yeah. is? Yeah. So if I continue to ignore it, like I am doing, what turns into a picture of the end of a bell or, or what? <laughs> a map of Tasmania. Big picture of a male chicken. <laughs> now... I have to say, I like this car more now than I ever have done. But how does it stack up to Germans? But... I think there is a problem with this car, because they've called it the Growler. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, we, we, we googled Growler, <laughs> and we were quite surprised and a bit shocked by what it turns out to mean. And do you know, Richard, I've just forgotten what it is. What does it mean? Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen? Well, you know those big welcome mats you might see on a girl in the 70s. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> right. that... Why would you name your car after that? You, honestly, James, I don't think they knew. I think they're sitting now in Zurich or wherever they are. Uh, th this is the first time they've realised that Growler means that yeah. in England. And they'll be sitting going, Gott in Himmel! Wolfgang, <laughs> we have accidentally named the car after I'm Fraugarten! <laughs> <laughs> The car, the growler. <laughs> yeah, the Is it um, based on the next case? Has it got four seats? No, you can't get in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's turned over to time, Barney. <laughs> what? What? I'm not... Uh... I'm not but, sure they're going to sell very many of those. Actually. No, I, no, neither do I. And there's another reason why. It costs £670,000. Ow! <laughs> yeah. There probably will be a trimmed-down version later, but I'll bet you... <laughs> Just for the Brazilian market. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's called the Growler. <laughs> sorry. There's a bloke at some point going to say, I'm just going outside to wax the ground. <laughs> 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 oh, you dirty bugger! <laughs> last year, last year, my CLK, uh, Mercedes. Uh, stupid, <laughs> stupid car. <laughs> this stupid wheel arch. You may think it's stupid, but it's very determined, OK? My CLK, it said, one day when I got in it, 24 days until the next service. Now, I mentioned this on the programme a year ago, OK? And I thought, I wonder what'll happen if I take it to 25 days. Because its German brain won't be able to compute the fact that somebody has disobeyed a direct order. <laughs> okay? Thing was, on the 24th day or whenever it was, Mercedes turned up while I was out and took it away for a service. It really annoyed me. Good news. Yesterday, it suddenly said, nine days until service due. It's brilliant. What I've done this time is I've parked it in a London underground garage and I'm not going to tell anybody which one. <laughs> Because I want to see what happens when it goes to minus one. No, that's dangerous. <laughs> it could panic. But like a horse in the 70s going go mad! Or it's probably already been building a glider so it can escape. <laughs> I thought that's why I've put it in an underground car park and not a multi-storey, so it can't fly away. Yeah? It's probably been specially trained to take a cyanide pill. <laughs> it'll have hidden it in one of its massive wheel arches. Right, so I must end it now. <laughs> so when I get back to it, you think it'll be dead? Ah, completely. Just... Of course, the main improvement we'd made was the new easy-to-use dashboard. Hammond, would you like to set the sat-nav, please? Yeah, we have a choice of yep. four destinations. Yeah, we do. Home, post office, Peggy's house or bingo. Yes, we do. What do you fancy? Bit of bingo? I fancy a bit of bingo. Bit of bingo? It's in. There, there you go. go. You have selected bingo. If you wouldn't mind turning left, that would be smashing. 
You see, now that's what I call a sat-nav instruction. So much better than the German ones. Go there to the next round the bottle or you'll be shot! Who wants to be told by a German where to go? I know, or a young German. At uh, that. Continue straight on. This area was bombed during the war, you know. Oh, you see. Those We're this, back in Jeremy's democracy. This <laughs> is the best Lamborghini of them all. Because what you've got here is you've got the kind of Germans building it, making sure that it actually comes out of the factory on time, but you've got Italian engine, Italian four-wheel drive, Italian styling, sprouty things coming out of the back. That, for me, is the perfect Lamborghini. It's the peak. And now, sliding down a bit. Well, Let me put it this way. A picnic, OK? If you went, you'd want the Germans to make the hamper so the handles don't fall off, <laughs> but you'd want the Italians to make the food. Yes? That's what you get with that. It's a German-Italian picnic where the Italians have done what they're good at and the Germans have done what they're good at. With this, the Germans have done the food. <laughs> it's like driving around in James May's sock drawer. Everything is exactly where you'd expect it to be. All organised. Blue ones, brown ones, pink ones for special occasions. Don't think, however, because it's sensible and practical and economical, that it's in any way boring. Look, the gear levers are sort of golf ball shape. You see, you Englishers, you have the Monty Python and the Harry and the Paul, but we have a sense of humor also with this. Yeah? There's... And they've just looked at hot hatches and thought, right, it needs to be powerful and fast and discreet and stylish, quietly. And then they've just made it the ultimate hot hatch. There you go, we've done it. That is it. We have run the game. But this is the thing that we don't really understand about Germany. Once something becomes a rule, it is a rule. In fact, I once had this, I once had a very interesting conversation with two friends of mine. One is from California and one is from Germany. And we were talking about losing your driving license. And the Californian said, in Germany, what had happened if you lost your license and then you, you know, drove your car? And the German said, no, you cannot do this. <laughs> And he says, yeah, I know, but what if, you know, I know you're not supposed to, but what if you, what if you did? He says, no, uh, you, you cannot drive, you have no licence. <laughs> and the Californian went, yeah, man, but, you know, late one night, you just, hell, you go for a drive. And the general went, it is impossible to drive without a licence! <laughs> impossible! Impossible! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now, last week, you saw Richard Hammond driving a six-wheeled Mercedes-Benz, but did you know... They made another six-wheeled car long before that one. Would you like to see a picture of it? After. Here it is. Oh, right. <laughs> did they not mention this, then? Do you know they didn't? How old? It is, isn't it? Because Mercedes like to go on about their heritage and history, and they didn't mention that one. Well, perhaps they didn't mention it because it's got Hitler in it. I don't know. <laughs> That's not Hitler. It is. It isn't. No, that car was built long before... Indicators were invented, so he's just there to do some hand signals. Really? What <laughs> signals are you doing there, then, James? He's saying, take the Third Reich. <laughs> Ow! Try the ticket. <laughs> as long as you've got this in your pocket, you don't need a key to start it either. You just touch the top of the gear lever. And that's just the start of it. That tells me how many malfunctions there are in the car. It's German, so there are none. There are 140 motors in this car, only one of which is the engine. This button here raises and lowers the rear roller blind. This one, if you push it once, car goes up a little bit. If you want to go a little bit off-road and then push it again, it goes up even more. If you want to go a lot off-road. If you've got the sports suspension engaged and you go around a left-handed corner, you're thrown this way, it'll actually tighten that bolster, it'll pull it round to hold you in the seat. That lowers the rear head restraints. Quite good fun, that, um, if someone's fallen asleep in the back. And if you push this one, where it says pulse, these inflate and deflate and move about. So it's really like having a little Vietnamese girl in there massaging you as you drive along. This one's the telephone, perfectly straightforward, it's kept in here. That's the satellite navigation, that's the CD player. And you can memorise all the seat positions on these things here. Just push that, that's my driving position, that can be my wife's and that can be my butler's. Except, of course, I've sacked him. 
Naturally, they're stuffed and padded with Amazonian coconut husks. This one turns off the audible parking sensors. This one engages sports suspension. And best of all, if you have an accident, in the time it takes to yelp, no matter how you've got the seat arranged, it'll go boof and arrange itself so that you're perfectly positioned for being hurled into the airbag. Makes crashing very comfortable. It's got four aerials in each one of the pillars. These are all the radio stations it can pick up. Some of them aren't even from this planet. Now this one enables me to select how long I want the rear number plate light to stay on after I get out at night. What kind of a meeting did they have where they went, have we thought of everything here? It's a rear number plate light. How long should it stay on after they get out of the car? <laughs>